Luckily for me, I get lots of photographs and things sent to me from customers. And uh, this particular one I wanted to share with you because he's actually found out something by physically doing uh, a small amendment that changes have made have been made and have worked um, so this is a picture beforehand this is an outbuilding in a back garden and uh, there's 50 mil of insulation being put up in between all the timber work as you can see here and it looks like that you know it's been done very very tightly so that's really good but you can see who, whoever did it um, has left big holes for the lights which is something that I see all the time no one's thinking about you know what's happening thermally at this particular point and then what happens they end up going and putting spotlights in now this particular picture you can see what he's done this is this is how it ends up and it was a beautiful room but he's had to put the insulation over the top as a temporary measure let me just show you another picture the room here before it was plastered and looking up through the holes which where the lights were at the back of the roof decking and you can see some mold starting to grow and he's actually talking there is water talking about water that is running back down into the room from these particular areas so we go back to what happened here is that because water was running back in he started to look at my videos and he realized that the first thing he had done was not to put any ventilation along the outside um, soffit boards so that was corrected the next thing he did was to put this insulation over the top of the holes which nearly makes them uh, airtight nearly airtight and he's noticed that that has made a great difference to the problem and when he's looked inside it it is drying out so he's now asking me you know where to go with this and he's talking about taking the ceiling down and correcting the insulation uh, which is up there um, and the question is whether or not he should do that go, because look at the, how lovely he's got everything here the question is should he do that is there a different way around it and when he does do it about a vapor barrier and putting a vapor barrier up well if we go back and have a look here this is the time that if he was back to this stage um, the insulation should be put in here and everything should be foamed so that it is absolutely airtight um, the top of this wall I don't know how it's been left because at the moment we've got plasterboard over it but the top of this wall here sh all of this sh should have been insulated down to the wall and the air could then move behind now the air on this particular um, uh, roof here would be moving backward and forward this way and this way with the vents because I don't think there's any cross movement so that means he's gonna have vents at that end and vents at this end so the question is vapor barrier at this stage the vapor barrier should have been put over the top of this it should have been put in correctly to the correct standards coming from the vapor barrier suppliers which normally means that every joint is taped and made airtight and the vapor barrier is taken down the wall and taped to the wall with good strong tapes which are going to last the you know a, a good period of time uh, Sega talk about their tapes and how good they are and they've tested them so that they know they're going to last 25 30 years and they give massive product guarantees on their tapes which is you know really good it, it's expensive people don't realize how much it costs to put a good vapor barrier in and how much time it costs to put a good vapor barrier in correctly so if he had the tape vapor barrier in he would be airtight the air tightness would stop the movement of sorry help control the movement of moisture up into the voids above because of the vapor control system and because you haven't got leakage of air now when we start looking at this scenario of leakage of air I come to this particular diagram which I picked off the internet from somewhere um, if someone tells me where I got it from because it was a long time ago I got it um, I would certainly give them uh, references uh, below um, I've seen this on American sites before when they're talking about um, gallons um, of water and so on and so forth but obviously this being liters is a European scenario but let's just have a look at this because should that gentleman take the whole ceiling down to put a vapor barrier up and really if we look at this there's two or three scenarios that you've got to take in from this information first of all this is that a sheet of plasterboard and they call it drywall here with no vapor barrier will 
per square meter and we're i'm assuming the calculations here are one third of a liter per year assuming a relative humidity inside of approximately 45 to 50 percent and that's because there's no air transfer there's no holes this one there's a hole the hole is two centimeters square 30 liters go through it so what we're actually saying here is that a, a well installed not cracked and with no holes in it sheet of plasterboard is actually quite a good vapor barrier and interestingly enough different paints over the top also help with that vapor um, uh, control so should the gentleman take the ceiling down well he's going to have to take the ceiling down in the areas where he has to get the insulation in so the ceiling is going to have to come down around these areas so that he can get the insulation in but then should he take the whole ceiling down and if I look at this, I mean, personally, I wouldn't be. I would be cutting this out. I, I know that in the past I've taken lights out and I have fixed the plasterboard and the insulation in, and then I have decorated over the top and using the light coming in from different angles and at night time by putting lights in different areas and working with the light and filling, I've been able to disguise and made a beautiful, I mean, if you look at this ceiling, it looks fantastic. The way the light's coming in, whoever did the plastering looks like they've done an excellent job. And I'm pretty sure with a little bit of effort, um, all the, the, the holes cut, big holes cut, so the insulation could go in and you wouldn't have to take all the plasterboard down. So would I go down that line? And the answer is yes, I would. Um, because he's increased the ventilation from the outside and he's put the, um, at, by this stage, he would have put the, um, in, uh, the, the insulation back in I don't think there's any need to install a vapor barrier that would be what I would go for and I hope hopefully when he sees this video he'll be happy with uh, with that conclusion thanks for watching